Okay. Just tell me to go. Go for it. Hey guys, welcome. I am super excited to be here. I uh, Real estate is amazing, but video, I'm even, even more passionate about it. And you might have heard me in the other room, but I spent 18 years in Hollywood as an editor working on some of the biggest movies in the world. And it's been, it was a lot of fun. And eventually in 2017, I got let go. So I joined my wife full-time in real estate. And my 2017, September, I got laid off. And 2018 was my first year full-time. And I joined my wife in our first year full-time. All we did was open houses and video and our GCI was almost $400,000 doing that. So I started sharing that with people. I want to share with you what I have learned and what I continue to learn. Like this stuff, like I worked on, you know, TV spots, movie trailers, commercials for big movies, but it's the same thing. It's all about getting people's attention and making them keep watching and engage. And then you got a call to action. What do you want them to do? In my old world, it was like, you want them to go see the movie. And dude, when you're working on, you know, for Ragnarok, it's not hard to get people to, to go see the movie, but it's a little harder for us as agents because A, our content isn't as compelling as a Marvel movie and, and B, there's a lot of competition out. There's a lot of agents out there. So the trick is you, you have to, you have to stand out. Now I'm just going to share with you just one thing so you can see I did, I did editing and I did voiceover and sometimes they crossed over. I actually was able to do voiceover for some of the stuff that I did. Have any of you heard of the movie Moana? Just nod your heads. Yeah, you've heard of Moana. Um, that was yes. one I worked on. That was that was a long time ago. Um, here's the thing. I had like I have a, a a YouTube channel that just has some of the TV spots and some of the the voiceover work that I did. I've got that up on on YouTube. But towards the end of my career in Hollywood, Marvel and Disney locked us down, so we couldn't like steal the things that we edited and get them up there. So I only have my old stuff up there. So I don't have the new stuff. But here's I just want to show you an old thing so you can see see well see that you can sell things when you are sharing videos it's okay to sell so let me go ahead and pull up this one thing right here it's just 30 second spot from moana that i did and it was for europe anybody ever heard of boxing day whoa what just fell <gasps> everything's still working right i just heard something fall um yes uh let's see let me just do this quick screen share share screen we'll do that one and I'm going to turn on this and this. Canada. It wasn't Canada. Oh, Boxing Day. Was, was it Canada? I think it was overseas and stuff. Here we go. Searching for the perfect holiday gift to put under the tree? Go and get it! This year, you can avoid the rush because the biggest surprise is right in front of you. How about Event Cinema's movie gift cards? Gift cards are available from $25. Buy now at eventcinemas.com.au or in cinemas. And be sure to catch Disney's Moana in Cinema's Boxing Day. Really? Blow dart and my butt cheek. So anyway, that's that's one of the, uh, you know, that's one of the things I edited and I did the voiceover of that one. Boxing Day in Australia overseas. That's the day after Christmas. And that's, that stuff was fun, but actually I find it's actually more fun for me, believe it or not, to make videos for my real estate business, my channel for realtors, because it's more fulfilling, more fulfilling than, than working on, you know, the biggest movies in the world, because it's me, it's, it's all you and the opportunity guys. I, I mean, I was told that you guys are somewhat advanced. So today I'm going to share with you just a whole bunch of stuff to go through. I'm going to go through it very quickly. You can tell me to slow down if you want me to cover some other things. Um, I'll have you know some links so that you can go to my YouTube channel and you can like get more detailed information about this. But these are I'm going to just kind of bullet point pretty much most of the things that you need to do to crush it on video as a real estate agent. Now, in the chat, how many of you have a YouTube channel? Just say me, me, me in the chat so I can see if if you do have a YouTube channel already. And you guys, you know, I was told that you are it, a, a bit advanced. Would you and ask, okay, good. There's a bunch of you that do. If you don't say, I don't, um, that you're a bit advanced. And what happens, a lot of people will, will not yet. A lot of people will start a YouTube channel. They'll get a little overwhelmed and then they'll stop. Most agents will eventually stop. Now you guys probably already know this stuff. There are 2 billion active users on YouTube every month. There are billions of hours watched every day. There are 500 hours of content uploaded to YouTube every minute. And as you probably know, go oh, congrats on the license, April. As you probably know, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world 
owned by the largest search engine in the world. You might have heard that before, but you need to let that sink in. When, when people watch your videos on LinkedIn or Twitter or Pinterest or Facebook or Instagram, they're just happening upon them. They're coming across them. When people find your videos on YouTube, there is a good chance that they were searching for these videos. So they were, these are engaged videos. These are potential clients. These are people that want to buy or sell a house. Remember when you had to spend millions of dollars to place an ad on TV to get in front of millions of people? Well, you can get in front of millions of people for free. You just got to do it right. You just got to put in the effort. You can literally hit millions of people. There are realtors with millions of views on YouTube and it's pot. You could, and you don't, and here's the other thing. People get all stressed out. And I want to get really clear about this. People get stressed out about having, oh, I need more views and I need more subscribers. It's like, dude, in my market, one view with one subscriber, somebody that's engaged, that's a twelve or fifteen thousand dollar commission in my in my last market in Simi Valley. I just moved to Oregon. I'm not licensed here yet, but twelve fifteen thousand dollars. So you don't need a bunch. You don't need millions of views. So don't worry about getting millions of views and millions of subscribers. Know that that's the potential is there. I want you to focus on getting the right kind of people to watch your videos, reaching those people that are ready to buy or sell a house. Now I'm going to jump in. So. You might, I just told you that there are billions of hours of content, on, billions of hours of content on YouTube. It's like, how can I possibly stand out with so much content? It's like, it's impossible to watch all of it ever in, in, in 50 lifetimes. You guys have a unique opportunity in that you are hyper-local. You are marketing to people in your local market. And if you look in your local market, there might be a few realtors who have posted videos online to try to grow their business. So they put up their listing videos, which yeah, you should do, but they're not the ones that are going to grow your business quickly. Almost every single realtor that starts making videos to grow their business, like the ones I'm going to share with you right now, they give up, they bail. If you're the one that pumps out a video every single week, you just pump just one video, upload to YouTube every week, keep it simple. I'll show you what to do in a year. If you do it right, you'll be the one. You'll be like, oh, well, that's that's the one because Sandra Meyer is the one that is out there that really knows the business. She really knows her market. She's engaged in the community. She's actively helping people. People are going to know you. It's it's a long-term, yes, you can get business right away, but this is a long-term game. And if you want to be in business longer than the average realtor, and as you guys probably know, the average realtor is in this business for three years and then they bail, right? And a, they're not making enough money. They're not making sales. They're not. They're not willing to put in the work. And B, it's freaking stressful, man. I mean, it's, it's a stressful business, right? But if you and and you can put in the work. Like a lot of people go, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna make cold calls. That's that's great. You know, they work. They work less and less because when I see a call right now, I see, oh, that's it says telemarketer. Have you ever gotten a call that says telemarketer? You gonna pick up that call? Like I I never made cold calls. I hated it. I mean, I I made calls for my business. Never made cold calls. Hated it. Um, it works. People still do it. You cold call eight hours a day, you're going to crush it. I don't, I don't want to do that. There are people that knock on doors. Now when you knock on doors, like, oh, you're not wearing a mask. I mean, depending on your state and whatever their beliefs are that week, you know, people aren't going to want you showing up on their doorsteps necessarily these days. So cold calling, door knocking, open houses, depending on what state you're in are, are cool or they're not cool. Um, we had in my market, we didn't have a lot of FISBOs. We didn't have a lot of expireds. I tried that briefly. Didn't do jack with that. But video man, when, you, when you're making cold calls, how many people can you reach at a time? Like one, right? One at a time. When you are making videos, you can reach hundreds or thousands of people in your local market that are ready to buy a house. So now here's the reason you gotta be consistent. Number one, every video you create, you are going to get better. In the beginning, you're gonna suck. You can go to my old channel. It's Jones Home Collective. Um, go to that channel and sort by oldest, watch my old videos, they're terrible. Even though I came from Hollywood and did voiceover and I tried to make it all professional and you know, look all dialed in with a good camera and they're terrible, they're unwatchable. They got like 20 views, they're awful. But over time you get better by doing it. And then I can sit here in this, in this webinar with a bunch of people, you know, burping up uh, monster energy drinks and I'm okay with that because you just, just gotta be, just gotta be who you are, right? And that's another thing. Don't try to be professional. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Don't try to be that other guy you saw on, on, on YouTube or Instagram that's killing it, you think, that you're running ads so they got a bunch of views. Like, don't try to be the guy, be you. There is, there is one you. There is one Tamika Warren in the world and nobody else can be Tamiko. Nobody else can be Eric or Sandra, just you can. So don't be afraid to own yourself. So number one, you get better with every video. And number two, every video is another hook in the water. When you post a video on Facebook or Instagram, 
you know, on Facebook say, oh, I got some views today. Look at I got, I got a hundred views in a day. And then what happens in a couple of weeks, that video is buried, right? Nobody ever sees it again for the most part. Same thing on Instagram, same thing on, you know, Twitter or LinkedIn or Pinterest or, or, you know, even on, uh, you know, Snapchat or TikTok, all those other platforms, stuff gets buried quickly. On YouTube, it is there forever. People search it like, oh, what's the best place to live in, in Dallas, Texas, like bink. And then your, your video pops up. Still, you can get you can get views years later. Like I haven't even, I haven't posted a video to my channel in my last market since like, what, March, I think. And I'm still getting comments on those videos. Like top reasons to move to Simi Valley, I'll see comments pop up on those videos. And I've even been on that market for, you know, for, for a year, basically, since we, since we left the state. Now, everybody's another hook in the water and they stay there for a year. And if you're consistent, there is no competition. If you're the one that does it every week, there's gonna be no competition, okay? So I'm gonna rapid fire what you need to do. Number one, now this is something that virtually everybody misses. And they think, yeah, 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 whatever, okay? And does anyone know what the first step is to crush it in any business or YouTube? Post in the comments. What is step number one? What do you think? Do it. Start. Start is be huge. Be Start is huge. The first thing you need to do, be consistent is, starting to be consistent is everything. But one thing that everybody forgets to do is dial in your niche. And you might have heard this from a million guys because it is the truth. You think my niche is I sell houses in Dallas, Texas. Like that ain't a niche. There's another 40,000 people that do that. Your niche is I sell houses to first time home buyers that work in the tech industry in Silicon Valley in the price range from $1 million to $1.5 million. That's a niche. You have to choose your niche. Like, I don't know what my niche is. I live in a regular boring city. Figure it out. Look at your last 20 trends. Look at all your transactions. Have you done a... If you've done business with a specific target demographic, specific avatar, figure out what your avatar is. Why do you need that? It, because if you're the realtor for everyone, you're the realtor for no one. You have to, even if you spend like a week going, I got I to gotta figure it out. And what, what do you do though? Okay, I figured out my niche is, you know, that Silicon Valley millennial, because maybe that's me. And I speak to that person in the last 20 transactions I did with that person. So I'm going to target them specifically. What do you do with that? Well, once you do that, you have to set up your channel to target that demographic so that, well, let me just show you, let me pull up my channel real quick. This is my channel that is for realtors. So you tell me if this, if I, if I did it here. So here's my channel. Let me pull it up right now. Is this stuff making What's sense? Up, so far, guys? Agents? My name's Trevor Jones. I had a great oh, job in Hollywood talking. as an editor. Trevor, there it is. Okay. And share screen this one okay so you guys can all see my screen right somebody just somebody not okay good said he's not okay so this is this is what your channel should look like. let me get this thing out of the way so i can see it okay this is this is my channel art this is my banner my banner says what it needs to say and no more what I want people to do when they come to my channel, I want them to be able to create better videos to sell more houses. And I, this is targeted to realtors. It's the same thing for you guys, specifically a very quick slogan. And dude, if it's like, hey, integrity, you know, love and passion for the industry, like nobody wants to think like that. You got to tell them what they're going to get. It's got to be about them. If you come to my channel, I'll teach you to create better videos so you can sell more houses, right? And then you also on your channel art, you want to say how often they get videos. So, and you've got to be consistent. If you're going to say videos every Tuesday, 11, 15 a.m., give them videos Tuesday, 11, 15 a.m. And then the other thing over here, you have the ability with your channel to give them links and you can have a bunch of links down here, like all your social media. No, you need to have one thing down here. If you give them 50 things to do, get, what are they going to do? If you give them 50, they're going to do nothing. So you got to give them one thing. So here it is, my free webinar. And depending on the size of the screen, this thing will be right underneath it. They click there and it goes to my webinar. So they can get my free masterclass to grow your business with video, which you guys should check out too. It's okay to sell in your videos. You have to. So make your channel art speak to your demographic, right? That's number one. Number two, got your little icon right here. You see that? That should be you. Sorry, a monster energy drink is torturing me. That should be a tight photograph of you with an engaging photo, looking straight into the camera, dressed like you want to be seen to your target demographic. If you are a country chick in the 
in the, you know, in the mountains and you ride horses, man, have that cowboy hat on and be smiling and staring right at camera. You, this, all this, all this little stuff matters. People like they skip, like, yeah, I'll do that later. I'll do that. All this little stuff matters. Right. And then you want to have your playlists. Now, if you look down here, I've got a bunch of playlists and there's, you know, I've got entire videos on how to set up your playlist, but your playlists can have things like keywords in them like here youtube tutorials that is a searched keyword we'll talk about keywords in a second um and number two, facebook tutorials and you can have descriptions see under here these are descriptions that's all important because when people type in a search term they can get videos and they can get channels and then get playlists and if you dial in your videos your channel and your playlist for that target keyword like top reasons to move to simi valley california you're the one that's going to pop up. So you got to dial all of that in and that's all searchable. And the last thing we're talking about here for getting your channel set up is your about section, right? And here's a little bit about me. This should be rich with keywords that people are searching for used naturally in full sentences. Does, does that make sense? So you got to set this thing up and you guys, is it clear why you need a niche? You have to have a niche. Everything should speak to them and every video should be targeted to that niche. And I know a lot of people think, Oh, dude, I man, if I if I'm just targeting those millennials, I'll miss all those retired people. It's like, no, you won't. You're not going to miss those people. But if you're if you're just out there for everybody, nobody's going to find you. You want to be found. You're going to get business lots of ways. This is going to get you out there and get all those hooks in the water. All right. Now, okay. Next. Now, I was told that you guys know how to find video topics. Do you guys just? Let me, can I see more of you at once? I don't know if I can see more of you. I only get a few at a time. Um, just in the, do you guys know how to find video topics? Just put in the comments below. And it's, if you, it's yes or no. Okay, you know how to do that. Okay, Sheila does. Do you guys know how to find topics? Okay, good. So I was told that you know that, oh, Miriam. Okay, you know how to find topics. We're not going to cover that. Um, so you know how to find the topics. One thing that you must do with every video, you've identified these topics, you know, they've shown you in, in other trainings, maybe Jerome's given you how to find these topics, but you've got to do your keyword research, you know, along with it. Oh, I know the topic, what is going to make that thing pop? How do I find the right title and the right description for that topic? And so what I use two tools for that. We're going to cover it briefly. If it's, if it's too fast, let me know. If it's too slow, let me know. But I was going to tell you what I do. So as you know, you go, am I still screen sharing right now? Let's see. Yes, I'm screen sharing. Okay, so if I go in here, I type in Simi Valley, right? I type in Simi Valley, I get all these topics and I can go, oh, some of these might be good for a realtor. These are things that people are actually typing in the search bar. You guys all know this stuff, right? So if you know this, tell me you do. Yes. Everybody knows that stuff. Okay, everybody knows that stuff. Okay, do you guys all have keywords everywhere? Do you know about keywords everywhere? Everybody knows about that? Okay, I'm seeing some nods. No, yes. Some yes. So keywords everywhere is a free plugin. Not a free. It's not a free. It used to be free. Now it's like it. You know, for four or five bucks a month, it lets you see numbers. It tells you like right here how search a topic is. You want to find topics that have an actual search volume between like fifty and two thousand. Simi Valley probably too big, too much competition. There's a a show called The Real Bros of Simi Valley. They get all my Google juice. Simi Valley, California, kind of getting closer in the zone. Simi Valley High School. Maybe I make a video about the high school. You know, it, that's something that people are searching for. People want to know, oh, how are the schools in my area? So you could make that video about Simi High School. So that'd be a great, a great place to start, right? And then, so what you want to do with this is start to identify the your target keyword, the thing that's going to be at the beginning of your title. And when you create titles, you want to create a title that's got the keyword in the beginning and then an emotional trigger afterwards or as part of it. Top reasons to move to Simi Valley, secrets you wouldn't believe, you know, something that's gonna give them, you know, a reason to move there. So let's go uh, see, top reasons to move to Simi Valley. Let me just see. Okay, oh, look what, videos, look what videos popped up. Mine, right? I haven't been there. See that video? I made it two years ago and my video pops up there. Simi Valley, top, so Simi Valley is my target keyword. Now here's the thing. Generally, you want a, a search volume here that is you know, between you know, 50 and 2000. But as you make videos, you can bump that up because eventually you're gonna be, when somebody types in that city, it's gonna be 50 of your videos because you, you pump, you've, bumped, you've, you've pumped out so much content. Now notice this here that my search volume is zero because nobody's searching exactly this, but they are searching for Simi Valley. So Simi Valley is a thing that triggered this and the fact that I put that in my title here obviously helped. 
So don't worry that once you put in your full title here, you're not getting the volume, just your initial keyword. So, you, so your initial keyword could be Simi Valley, California, Simi Valley High School, Simi Valley Police Department, whatever things might be searching. Simi Valley Communities, Simi Valley Neighborhoods, and then your target keyword, Simi Valley Neighborhoods, this one's amazing, you know, whatever your emotional trigger is after that. So I usually start here, I try to find a target keyword, and then I click on a video that's doing well in that market, if there is one, and I scroll down here and using TubeBuddy, it can tell me, you know, how that how that video is doing. And, you know, it's like I can see, oh, there's VidIQ, another app I use. It's oh, there's the, the SEO search engine optimization score is pretty good. And then I can go down here and I can see these video tags that this guy, me, used. And here with TubeBuddy, I can see if this video has any ranked tags. Like, oh, is this video doing okay? And after two years, notice that this video still has tags that are ranking number two for moving to Simi Valley, you know, Simi weather, number three, all these things that I talk about and I'm still getting ranked. And so what you can do, if you find somebody's video that is doing well in your market, you can look at those tags and you can go, oh, I can use those tags for my video if they are 100% relevant. Now don't put in stuff like realtor or real estate or home or homes for sale. It's too vague. It's going to give Zillow and you know, realtor.com is going to show up. You want things that have your city name in most or all of the tags. So you can steal these tags, put them in your video. And then with keywords everywhere, here's a trick that I use that I haven't seen anybody else talk about. Which ones of these tags are actually getting searched? Like, oh, now I set up keywords everywhere so that I can see anything that has over 500 search volume per month, that's green. So I know that, oh, and I can see this, these are not just my videos, anybody's videos. I can see, oh, these are terms that are searched a lot. So what I do is I'll look at four or five videos from people that have ranked in my market. And I will look at all of their tags that are relevant that are in the green that are 500 plus. And those are the tags I will use in my video. Now, if you guys don't know what tags are, these are just the descriptive terms you put at, in the tag section of your video when you're uploading your video to YouTube. For those that are new to this, tags matter almost zero. I mean, people go crazy on tags back, you know, short history. In the past, when YouTube was started in 2005, tags meant everything. You'd put in Simi Valley, you'd put Simi Valley 50 times here and 50 times in your description here. And then suddenly you would be the top ranking video. People abuse the crap out of that. So tags matter almost nothing except for spelling. They matter a little bit helping your video get found, very little. They matter relatively little. But what you do want to do, the reason you want to identify the tags is not so much to put them here, but is to put them in the description of your video to help your video get found. YouTube can see your video, they can hear your video. I suggest you caption your video. I use rev.com, I caption all my videos and they can read all of your stuff here. And the description matters number three on the list of things that matter that we're gonna talk about. But you do wanna write a complete description here using full sentences, using all of these very relevant tags. You can't put random stuff in here that you're thinking, oh, I wanna rank for this. You've got to put relevant stuff in here. Does that, does that make sense, guys? These are all, and it's all these little things that add up to a million things. And eventually you're the one that's ranking. Every video is, is ranking. And then, and then I go to, and then I go to keywords every, or then I go to TubeBuddy. I go, okay, back to top reason to Simi Valley. And TubeBuddy is going to tell me like, oh, how good is that term for you, Trevor? Now it's, it's ranking me based on, you know, overall it's good, right? I click here for my weighted score. Now, when you have a paid account with TubeBuddy, you don't need it, but I've got the paid accounts. You, okay, un, by the way, unweighted is how this search term works for every, any channel randomly. And weighted is like how this would work for my channel. Now, my channel, this one that I'm on right now is not targeted to Simi Valley. This one is targeted to real estate agents. So it's just, it's good. It's not, it's not amazing, right? But if I type in something like um, Simi, Simi Valley crazy movie secrets. I'm making stuff up. I don't know. You type stuff in here and you try to find something that is going to give you a higher score. And here it's like, oh, I mean, I actually have videos on how to find and download movies, uh, you know, movie clips and stuff. So that's giving me an excellent score, right? So if you can get in the green and even for unweighted, it's, it's kind of great, right? So these are just some little tips. There's a bunch of stuff in TubeBuddy and VidIQ and and keywords everywhere that can help you. But just dialing in those basic things is going to help. And that is, um, that's that's what you do. You, you find that topic. Now, next, 
you want to you know, pull this off real quick so I can talk to you face to face. Okay, the next is this is this making sense so far, guys? Or is that yes. too fast? Does it make sense? Okay. All right. Okay, and whatever. Okay, so the next thing, once you've identified that topic, you've identified the topic and you've created, we'll talk about titles in a second, but you've created that title with an emotional trigger that makes a human want to click, you've got to write your script, right? So number one, you want to outline your script. What I, what you don't want to do is write it out word for word. And a lot of people do, they think, oh, I want, I'm going to forget what I'm going to say, right? And, but if, here's the thing, I'm a tra I spent lots of money getting training to be a professional voice actor, right? And when I became a realtor, I'd like, I'd read my script. Hi, my name is Trevor Jones. I'm a realtor for Simi Valley, California. And I would love it if you would use me as your real estate agent. And nobody wants to watch that. It sounds stupid, right? What you want is to bullet point it. Just write out little bullet points like ding, 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 ding. I'm going to make a video about interest rates. So let me talk about, oh, what just happened? What did the Fed just say? What, uh, what is the average rate? And what are homes selling for my market? And you know whatever your topics are. And then look at your topic. Here's what I do for almost all my videos. If I'm doing a talking head video like this. Set up the camera, I keep it rolling, look at my topic, and I deliver it one thing at a time. I'll look it down and go, oh, hey, da -da 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 -da. and I talk about it like I'm talking, I'm talking to you guys, I'm not reading anything, I'm talking like a regular human, and I'm fired up because caffeine, and I'm a passionate guy, and I love video, and I'm, I'm loud. You should see me at the gym in the morning offending everybody, because whatever comes to mind, I just, I just kind of say it, right? But it's okay to be yourself, be yourself. So I deliver things one at a time, and then editing, People get all you know, freaked out about editing. All editing is like, oh, I, I made, it took me five times to get that concept out that I keep the fifth one, I delete the other ones and I cut out the ums and the ahs. So it just kind of flows together. It doesn't have to be complicated. Editing is just keep the good parts, remove the bad parts and shuffle things around a little bit if you need to. That's all editing is, right? It's not that complicated. So outline it. Now, once you outline the script and you don't have to spend a lot of time, just you guys, you guys know real estate, you know more than a thousand percent of the people on the planet about real estate because you're realtors, right? The first thing you want to do, and by the way, people get all caught up in like, oh, let me see what other real estate agents are doing, which is great. And I do that. And I suggest people do that. But sometimes it's great to get outside of your market and see what other people are doing to have success in the thing you want to do. And what's the thing we want to do? We want to have success with video on YouTube specifically. So what do you do? You look at, hey, what's PewDiePie doing? What's Mr. Beast doing? You guys know who PewDiePie and Mr. Beast are? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. You guys do Mr. Beast. The dude's got like what 50 million subscribers almost already. And he, he makes millions of dollars. And the kid's like 22 years old. I saw him speak live at a, at a convention in LA a year or two ago before the COVID hit. And it, what can we learn from these guys? Number one, when you start your video, never, ever, ever, ever start with an intro, like boom, music, sound effects, graphics. Guess how many people care about your stupid intro? How many people care about it? Do you zero. Care about zero. Nobody, zero. Nobody cares about your stupid intro. I used to, so I'll talk about it intros in one more second. You start with the most compelling piece of information your video has. If you have something shocking, if you're showing the top movies created in Simi Valley, California, you go, dude, I just found where this movie was shot and somebody actually died on the set. <gasps> you know, have something that's compelling. You don't have to be all hyper and crazy like me. You do it in your own style. Be you. But you start with the meat. You've got to hook them. Give them a reason. That's one thing. You can, you can look at your entire video, even if you don't plan a hook and go, oh, this was really cool. I just found, I just found that you can, you can buy a house with no money down under these circumstances. Like, did you know that you can buy a house with zero money down? And this isn't one of those sales pitchy commercial things. I just literally, like, like there's probably 60% of you can do that with this stuff I just found. Something compelling. You got to hook them in the beginning. Does that make sense? You got to make them want to watch, right? And then, so one way is to have something crazy to say in the beginning or something that's compelling or makes them want. And it's, you know, it's real estate. So you got to, you got to amp it up a little bit. Or number two, you can just tell them exactly what they're going to get. If you created a video that says, see me Valley, how to find the best lender. It's like, in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the very best lender and see it's going to give you the very best rates, right? So you start with a hook. After the hook, then you have to, I used to do a hook and then I would do an intro. I'd do a quick five second intro. And that's what I, you know, I taught in my course for a long time is like, oh, do the hook and then do a quick intro. 
you know, three to five seconds max, people would come on with these like 30 second intros. They download these templates and have these 30 second intros. It's like, dude, nobody's going to sit through your 30 second intro. So now you know what I do on my channel and what I tell my, my agents is skip the intro, no intro hook. And then immediately jump into the tease, stick around to the end of the video. And I'm going to show you a trick that nobody knows about in the whole city. I just learned about it today. You, you really want to see this and it's going to save you on an average, ten to twenty thousand dollars on your loan fees, or whatever. You got to give them the reason to stay to the end, and then share that that big payoff for the end of the video, right? So hook, tease them, and then next you want to you want to jump right into the meat. What do they come to the video for? Start giving it to them. No connecting sentences. Don't start out like, "Hey, you know, I really, I really like that you guys are here, and I've." You know, I've been an agent in Simi Valley for 27 years and I'm the very best one. And, and last year I got agent of the year at EXP and I have a thousand people in my downline. Dude, nobody cares. Skip all of that. Skip all the connecting senses. Jump into the meat. Number one, today I spoke with Jenny Sherman, my lender, and I learned that there is a new program that was just released, approved by Congress and the Federal Reserve is allowed to and just jump into the stuff. So get to each of the points very quickly. And here's another thing that keeps people engaged. When you go to a movie, what keeps you engaged? Tell me why you watch, somebody say in the comments what, uh, why you go to movies? What do you go for? Do you go for facts? Do you go for information? I know you guys can type, there's 33, oh, there's a few there, right? The popcorn, good acting, good, yes. The story, the story is everything. You want people to stay? You know, they're going to click because they're searching for something on YouTube. You have to tell story. And I don't mean some long, rambly, irrelevant, boring story. But if you can tell stories about personal stories are the most meaningful, if you can be a little bit vulnerable and share stories, if you can share your client stories, if you think, I don't have any stories, I'm only 40 years old and nothing's ever happened. Well, A, that's not true. You have a bunch of stories. Think about when, you, when you're excited about something and you go to your friends at the gym or church or the store like, oh, dude, did you hear that? Tell those stories and find the relevant ones and tell them. Tell them about your, your client stories. If you can't, if you have no clients, they have no stories, you have no stories, your city has stories. Make videos telling stories about your cities. One of my videos that's done better than any of them is one that's I did about Leo Carrillo, a beach I went camping at a, as a kid. And it does really well because people connect with that. They connect with the story. They have their stories there. So learn to tell stories. And what's a story, right? A story is just set up. Conflict resolution, right? Doesn't have to be crazy. Can be 30 seconds. Doesn't have to be stupid long. If you're like, I can't think of it, just beginning and end. Something like, and a little more involved is like set up conflict. A character has to overgo, overcome something and then they overcome it and they're changed in the end. Make the, make the character your clients, you know, past clients or things that your, your clients have been there. Like I have, I have clients, um, you know, Vince, Vince and Kelly. Like we were, these guys, we were showing them houses for years. When we first started showing them houses, Kelly was like oh, pregnant out to here, right? And we kept showing them houses, nothing worked, nothing worked. And then we tried one little trick. We just changed the search criteria a little bit and we found a loan that got them a little more money and bing, the per perfect house popped up. And guess what? By then, Sawyer was two years old, their daughter, right? So you tell little stories like that that'll make them smile. And... Okay, and then, and then after you're done with that, you skip the outro. Hey, thanks for watching. Cue the drone shot and the graphics. And here's my business card. And here's all my contact information. Who wants to watch that, man? Who wants to watch it? Nobody, right? Nobody. So don't freaking put it there. Your contact information is below. In the end, you get through all those things. Hook, tease, all the meat. Boom, boom, boom. You're, you're through it quickly. And at the end, a call to action. How many calls to action? Hey, like, comment, subscribe, call me, text me, email me, click my link down below. Not 20 things. Give them one thing to do so they know what to do. If you don't tell them what to do, guess what they're going to do? They're going to watch the next freaking video that probably isn't going to be yours. You want them to do something. So there's two ways you can go about that. Number one, you can have a call to action. It was like, hey, for all that contact information on the top 10 lenders in my city, click that link down below. They type in the link, they use something like leadpages.net and bing, 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 they type it all in and um, you get their contact information and you can keep following up with them, right? That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to just say, just show how passionate, like, dude, 
reach out to me. My contact information as well. I can't wait to, to, to text you because I know you hate texting because you're a millennial. So just say something funny and get them to reach out and have your contact information in the description below, like right near the top so they can easily find you. You don't have to have all the junk on the screen. It loses them. And we'll talk about why in a second. Now, okay. Now, remember the first video I showed you with from Moana? It's like, that was watchable because why? Because The Rock was in it and he's watchable. So what you need to do is get The Rock in every one of your videos and you'll sell lots of houses. Okay, you probably don't know The Rock. I don't either, but I think he used to live in my city, Simi Valley, um, but I never saw him. No, it was watchable because it was entertaining. I mean, buying a movie gift card, who wants to watch a TV spot or a commercial in a theater about that? Nobody wants to watch that, right? But if you're watching it and it's entertaining, you're watching Moana, you got funny jokes in it, you know, it's, it's watchable. So think about that as you're creating your stuff. All right. So you've, so we've written our script. Now you've got to film it. I'm going to show you a, you guys want to see a quick clip? I'm going to show you a quick clip of, you know, you live in CBL. So I can give you an idea on how to, how to tell a story and how to get things funny. You guys want to watch that or no? Say yes or no. Somebody type. Nobody can type. You never want to watch it. I want to show you my video, man. Everybody wants to see it. Let's see. Um, let me close you, you. Okay, there's one. Okay, somebody wants to watch. Okay, so here's Sioux Valley. I'll show you this one. You know, you live in I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing. Actually, I'll do the one with my wife in it. It's shorter. And I'll do, you know, you live in Sioux Valley. Okay, this is one y'all need to make. You're like, oh, what topics make the, you know, you lived in the city one. I'm gonna share my screen. I want that one and I want optimize and share. All right, here we go. Here is, it's only two, do you guys have two minutes in you? I'll, I'll share the whole thing because it's fun and it's not me. Well, it is me talking, but here we go. You, you know, know you, you lived in Simi Valley, if. You heard they built the Ronald Reagan Library, but the first time you came to visit was when you had somebody come in from out of town. You did all your Christmas shopping for the Blue Light Specials here at Kmart. Hey, did they, did they change the name? You've heard of Grandma Prisby's Bottle Village. The only time you ever went to the Simi Town Center Mall was to go to the Apple Store. I need a laptop. You dress about like this. 365 days a year because California. You love Simi Valley's fine international cuisine. Hey, that's the first place I ever worked at. I worked in that drive through right there. I used to say things like, welcome to Carl's Jr. The management didn't like that very much. There's four of these in Simi. You wonder what the heck they were thinking when they designed this intersection. Am I going? Yeah, going. I know, but I can't see. You remember when Vons was called Jemco. You've been in Corganville where they filmed lots of movies, including The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Silver away. You got a ticket for riding your Honda SL70 in the hills right off of Erringer. You've ever caught the big one at the Simi Duck Park? I got one, Dad! If you've ever tried to hike to the Manson Caves, I know they're right. Is that poison oak? Dang it! You remember when this mall was Pepto-Bismol pink? You've endured the gaze of Grandma Prowse's six eyes, everybody's favorite substitute. Your family's Christmas tradition was to come by the big yellow house on Sycamore and check out all the awesome Christmas displays. You know you've made it home when you see Happy Face Hill. You've ever dared your friend to walk in front of the poltergeist house? What's after midnight. Dude, I'm out of here. There are a ton of fun and quirky things about Simi Valley. There's also a lot that we love about Simi, which is why we chose to raise our family here. In fact, we made a video about it right right, right up there. You should, you should check it out. If you'd like us to help you find a little piece of your Mayberry USA, give us a call. And if we miss any fun facts that you know about Simi Valley, comment below. Oh, it sounds dumb. You're like really fake. Okay, you do it. Go ahead, genius. Come on, wizard. <laughs> Nail it the first take. You remember when Jimco was called Vons. My take's way better. Whose take was better? It's pretty good. Um. It's an easy trail to find. Just follow the beaten path, they said. <laughs> You're dressed about like this! Anyway, so that's, you know, you don't see most real estate videos aren't aren't quite like that you know that was you know i think that was more fun than the most videos you can do stuff like that like that one has a lot of editing and that kind of stuff but and you don't you don't have to be you know fancy with editing and using stuff but that's just just something you can do to just give you give you some ideas let me use did i stop the screen share yeah i stopped the screen can you see my face now for me right that's all i want you to see all right so let me just talk a little bit about Okay, we're, we got 15, 20 minutes left. Let me just talk about how to make your videos actually look better. Some people get some of the really, really basic stuff wrong. And you do this and it's gonna look and sound better. So number one, let's talk about framing. 
I see a lot of this, right? People are like, oh, I gotta put my head in the middle of the frame because that's where the little square is on the camera, right? You just look, you look stupid. Don't frame yourself like this. Or I, I even had a lender, she sent me a video and she was like down here talking like, like Jen, what, what, what are you doing down there, right? So the proper way to frame, to have a position of authority, and you know, when you're doing a talking head video specifically, is put your head like right near the tiny bit of space, right near the top of the frame and centered. It's artistic if you're doing fun stuff out, you know, you can have stuff off of the side, you have something to balance out over here, but that's just like framing 101. Get your head near the top of the frame. Sunny, your head's too low, bro. Get your head up there. Sunny, Sunny Mai, can you hear me? I'm talking to you. Yeah, tilt your screen down, that's right. Janice, get your, oh, is that a, I can't, oh yeah, see Janice. Yeah, I'm watching you. Sandra, head's too low, head's too low, right? Jerome, you're too tight. It's like, you know, I can watch you guys. I'll judge and critique all of you. I'm not afraid. There it is, Sheila. Yeah, <laughs> there it is, Sheila. Troy, your lighting's too dark, right? So just practice, even when you're doing Zoom chat and stuff, it just makes you look more professional if you are in the frame about like this. You don't want to be too close. You don't want to be too far away. You want to be just kind of just, just, just right to have enough of you. So when you're doing these things. So number one, get your framing right. Number two, audio. Bad video is forgivable, bad audio is not. You know, like right now, I have this little mic right here. And did you guys know, see this very mic? Because our voiceover booth, can you hear me better now when I'm close, right? See how, see how this sounds compared to how this sounds? Can you hear the difference? Not, I can see a couple of you, right? See the difference? Okay, people will have their phone across the room and they'll start recording like this and it sounds freaking terrible. Or either, and, and you don't need, you don't need a fancy mic by this. This mic, but our voiceover booth was down when I was at my last place, um, was used to record a Beauty and the Beast dancing with the Disney Channel star, star spot. So look at that, history right there, like anybody cares. Okay, you want to have your mic close to your mouth. It doesn't matter. Your, the mic on your iPhone is great. If you have it close to your mouth, it's gonna sound good like this, or even like this, if you're kind of, kind of doing a vlog thing, this is close enough. So number one, close to your mouth is everything. Using my iPhone mic close to my mouth versus a Neumann TLM 107 or 103 for $1,000. This is going to sound better if the Neumann is across the room and this is close to my mouth. So that's way more important. Number two, you want to have decent acoustics in the room. I've got terrible acoustics in this room. I've got some panels up here, but it's, it's pretty echoey. So it's not great, but you can overcome a lot of that. Well, A, you know, Put some blankets up, uh, put some carpet down, have some furniture in there, have some drapes, right? It's gonna help a lot. Or don't record in the kitchen, don't record in the bathroom, obvious stuff, but just having the mic close to your mouth is going to help immensely. So even this different distance between, you know, you know, 18 inches and six inches, like it sounds way better right here, right? So that's so if you can do those things, and then obviously what mind your background. You don't want to be recording, you know, you know, by the freeway or a busy street necessarily. Um, but if you get it close to your mouth, that's gonna help. What mic people, oh, what mic should you get? Dude, it doesn't matter. There's like, there are literally thousands of amazing mics, um, but I'm just gonna share with you what I have in case anybody cares. Uh, I've had this one for like three or four years, the Rode Video Mic Pro, it's like 229 bucks. I use it, I mount on top of my camera, I mount it on top, of my, uh, on top of my iPhone and it sounds amazing. Now I have, you know, I did voiceover. I still do a tiny bit, people call. I have this mic here and it's like a thousand dollar mic. It's a Sennheiser 416 total overkill, but because I have it, you know, I use it for things, but this mic and this mic sound almost as good as each other. Once you spend a couple hundred bucks on a mic, it doesn't, doesn't make any difference. And you don't have to spend that much, right? I also have this mic, which is going to be, this is a corded mic that is 20 bucks, right? With a little lightning port adapter, you can put, you can plug this mic. This is a boy. There's a million, it doesn't matter. On all of my videos have links to, to you know, some of this junk if you care which ones, but there are $20 mics that sound amazing because with a lavalier mic, what do you do? You clip it. Why does this mic sound good, do you think? Oh, scratchy audio. All my movement causes scratchy Cause, audio. Because it's close to your mouth. That is correct. That's right. Look at you. So you've got it here and it's like six, six inches from your mouth and then boom. It'll, it'll sound great right? instead of instead of a couple of feet away, you know, your thing. And it's got like a 10 foot cable on it. So just get one of these. You don't you don't have to spend money. Just get that mic close to your mouth. Now, I've been I've been wanting to get a wireless mic for a long time. And Rode finally made one that works. And this one was, I think, 300 bucks. But it's if you're going to spend some money on a mic that you can use for everything. This one is great. It's called the Rode Wireless Go 2. And this one is cool because it has two transmitters. 
So my wife and I, we do videos together. We have an, a travel channel, an RV channel. We each wear one and no matter, even if we're like 20 feet away or a hundred feet away, it still sounds great and records and you just can't do that. I've always been, I've always felt limited having just a shotgun mic on my, on my face. But with this, you can be a hundred feet away. So these are great, but you don't need it. I mean, I, I just got these. I've been making videos for years, just got these. You don't need them, but that's, that's fun if you've got the budget and they sound, they sound pretty great. Um, yep, and Sheila says she's got a mic that she uses for every video and they said they sound great. Yeah, yes, and yes, make sure you mic the other person too. Somebody said for sure. Hey, All Trevor, right. yes. hey, Trevor if, they, if they use their iPhone for a mic, um, they have to uh, uh, edit that in to the video, correct? Well, you can actually plug the mic right into here, so you don't have to edit it. So you could, oh, oh, you mean for, oh, for the mic instead of like use your camera and then use the iPhone. Correct, correct. Yeah, I was talking. I would just, yeah, you can. There's, there's two things you can do. You can just plug a, a mic right into your iPhone, and you know, use your, you know, the audio is connected. Or you could have them. You could have that little lapel mic clipped to your face here, and just put this in your pocket and use a recording program, and then have your camera wherever. And you could like walk far away. So that's a cheap way to have a mic at a distance. You know, you record on your phone and then you just sync it later in post, have your editor do it. You can do it. You can like sync it up pretty easily. Um, that makes sense. Okay. So let's just talk about, about video really quickly. Um, video, it's, it's all, it's all, once it's framed right, you just, just get the lighting right. You know, a lot of people, they'll be in a room and they'll just use the overhead lights. Alexa, lights on. and then have this light off and this just looks it looks it looks terrible right and i got a light there so it's a little better alexa lights off so just so you can just get a simple light like i've got a, this light here's like a 90 dollar light you can get an umbrella light for 25 bucks you can do that or you can sit in front of a window and just have nice even soft light on your face i do a little spend a little more time for my videos you know just to make them more fun i've kind of changed it up a little bit and you also do stuff like this you can get some little background lights, accent lights, you know, add, add a lot. And it just makes it, makes it more fun and watchable. And these are things you can do over time. I just got these. Like I've been wanting stuff like that for a long time. I just got these. And because of where I'm set up in this tiny, this area for the screen recording, it doesn't look as good, but usually I'll have it farther away and it's darker and it looks, it looks cooler. Um, but, but there's like a ton of stuff you can do. Just, just spend a little bit of time learning a little bit about light. I got videos out on my channel, but the short thing is get frame nice and have a soft light in front of you, whether it's a window or an umbrella or a soft box or one of these LED lights, like I use with a little soft box on it. And it just makes, it makes all the difference. You just look professional. Just don't use your overhead lights because it looks, it looks freaking terrible, right? Um, another thing you do too, when you're filming your videos to make them more watchable is to, is to change locations. If you're sitting in the same spot every time, just talking, 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 it, you know, it can be boring. So go outside, change locations like we did in that Simi Valley video. Some people like these big YouTubers, they'll like, they'll sit here, then they'll turn and face here, different background, and they'll turn and face here for a different background. It takes, it takes a little bit more effort, but it makes it more watchable. The thing that makes people click off is seeing the same thing over and over again. And like, oh, okay, he's just talking his face on board <clears throat> and they're done. Sorry. Another thing you can do, and again, um, the reflection, yeah, you can adjust. Somebody asked about the reflection of my eyeglasses. I don't wear glasses when I'm recording videos because I'm just doing it now so I can see the screen. I take them off so I don't have to worry about it. But you can angle, the trick is you just have to angle things, you know, just position thing, position your lights in such a way that there's no reflection on them because the reflections can be distracting. Trevor, uh, Trevor, it, we got we got about eight minutes left, and I want to okay. open up for Q and A, and I also want okay. you to share. Okay. Uh, you have some links, and you also have a course that I think people would appreciate. So, okay. let's let's knock that out. Okay, um, so let's start with. Um, let me just let me just get the the final thing. Right. Uh, the, the, this this is most important. The three th we're talking about YouTube. Three things that matter most are your content, you have to keep them watching the whole time. The number one metric that YouTube cares about is how long people are watching your video. If they click on your video, they watch five seconds and they bounce, your video is dead. They're not gonna show it with more people. So you want to engage them for the entire duration of the video. That's why I said, get rid of the intro, get rid of the outro, keep them watching, that's number one. Number two, they have to click first. So what really matters is your title and your thumbnail. Create titles that humans want to click on, like we talked about earlier, and thumbnails that people want to click on. They have to, they, it, it has to be engaging and compelling. And that's why I look at guys like Mr. Beast. He makes these like silly elementary looking titles for his market, but people click on them. He spends a lot of time. Some people spend more time on their thumbnails than they do on their, 
on their videos. So don't, you know, don't, don't underestimate the power of your thumbnails and titles. That's, that's everything. If they don't click, you're done. So you got to make them. If you can't make them, you can use Canva. I got videos on that. Or you can just pay somebody on Fiverr. I've been trying guys in the Philippines and on Fiverr and stuff because I don't have time. Um, and you can have people edit for you as well. So make them watch. Make great titles, great thumbnails. Be consistent and you're going to crush it. Now, what questions do you have? Um, um, okay, so green screen, there are people like my, you guys know who Jackson Wilkie is. He's a friend of mine that does the same thing I do. He's got a you know, bunch of YouTube channels. Um, he's, he was in the beginning, he was all about the green screen. I, you know, in Hollywood, we use green screen all the time, but when you're using green screen in Hollywood, they're using, you know, $50,000 cameras and shooting in, in 4444 instead of 410 or 420 the way we shoot here, which is basically meaning when we're using our consumer cameras, the data isn't enough to really accurately key out the green screen. If you're a bald dude, then it'll be fine. If you're a girl with blonde hair, it's going to look terrible. I used green screen in the beginning too. I thought, oh, it's cool. Personally, I hate green screen. Some people love it and they have success. Jackson had total success. He was using green screen on a GoPro, which shouldn't even be able to be used for green screen, but it, it was working. It's a personal preference. For me personally, I hate it and it makes it more difficult. When I was shooting green screen for my videos and you can go on my channel and see them, um, I'd spend more time trying to make the green look pretty with my wife's hair, make the green go away and her hair actually show and her face not disappear than it would editing the video. So I, I hate green screen, I think it's worth it. I think it's better off just set up a background like this in your house, it's way, way easier or go outside. That's my, that's just opinion, Sheila. But if you love it, you know, go, you know, it'll, it'll you can still work. It won't, it won't make a difference in the long run. You know, I mean, I know that you can like, but you don't think it. it changes the watchability. Do you think it changes the watchability by people? No, I, in the long run, not, not really. I mean, I get, I mean, because you're changing the shots. I mean, I think changing the shots changes the watchability. But if you're going to change the shot, I'd rather just fill the whole frame with B-roll than to show it behind my head with a halo around it of green glowing. You know, I think it just looks way better. That makes sense. All right. Um, what are the questions you guys have? Anybody have questions? Uh, I have a question. So as far as like um, starting off a YouTube channel, like should you kind of like, if you have like a, like, you know, some people do like a business account or like a personal account, like do you yes. think you should kind of build off there or like start like a separate account just for like your business? Yeah, okay. So I think you should have, have an email that you use for all your business, a Gmail account, and you can have multiple, you can have multiple YouTube channels off that same account and you can create what's called a brand account. And I am screwed right now because I didn't set up a brand account for my main channel. I've got almost 15,000 subscribers on it. I've got an editor in the freaking Philippines and I have to give him access to my full account because I don't have a brand account. I could, and this is a guy that, you know, I met online, you know, two weeks ago that has all this power over my account. Fortunately, he seems cool. No problems, right? He's doing he's doing a good job. Um, but if he ever gets mad at me, he can wipe up my whole account. So it's terrifying for me. So with a brand account, the big advantage is you can assign people tasks and give them certain controls and have control over your whole account. So should you set up a brand account? Yes. And there's a video. In fact, I'm going to make a video how to set up a brand account. It's easy. Now I could switch mine to a brand account, which is great. I can keep the name. Everything's exactly the same, except that once you switch it, Every comment you've made on every video in the history of your life evaporates. And I have videos with, a, you know, I got a video with a couple hundred thousand views and I've commented on a, a million things there. So for that to go away, it's, it's like it wouldn't be worth it at this stage. So yes, set up a YouTube channel just for your business and make it a brand account. And is your question sunny? You're nodding. Okay, anybody, other questions? Yeah, three minutes left. Um, I do, if you guys are, by the way, I, no big sales pitch, but I do have a course. There's a link for it around down here. It's normally $2,000 and I'm given for EXP people. It's $497. Plus you get, my private Facebook group is closed. I can take care of my people, but I'm, I'm letting EXP people into that private Facebook group where I answer every question personally. I'll make a video, screen record, whatever, answer all the questions. So that's something that's just for EXP today with that link right there. I've also got links for Keywords Everywhere, which is not an affiliate link. TubeBuddy, which is an affiliate link and you get a free trial with it, whatever. And then music, I use Epidemic Sound so that we don't really talk about that. But one thing, the goal for every video should be to make them feel something. And the best way to make somebody feel something cheap and free and easy is add some music, man. Make the music match what you're talking about. All right. In fact, I have a great example of that. I don't have time to show you, but I have a YouTube channel. It's right here. Another one. My wife and I sold our house in Southern California 
and bought a vandalized RV and renovated it. And I can't see, that's why I wear glasses, I can't freaking see. And if you go to lifeuntethered.com, it'll take you to that untether.com. And the reason I tell you this is, A, you gotta look outside your market. If I spelled that right, untether.com, that might work. Um, or just go to YouTube and look up Life Untethered, L-Y-F-E. And you bet. And on there, the latest video on there, one thing I do is I change the music. Every topic, I'm changing the music, changing music, changing music, so you can feel something when you're watching it. Did I spell that? Life untethered.com. Yeah, that's the link there. That'll take you there. So I suggest that you watch the video so you can learn from other things besides real estate. What I do there, that works in real estate as well to make your videos fun. Don't have to edit yourself. You can hunt. If you, get, you want an editor, go to onlinejobs.ph. You can get guys for like, I got a guy for eight bucks an hour. And yeah, I have to coach him and stuff, but but it's but it's great. And unless you're an editor, they'll probably do better than you if you're just like trying to figure this stuff out. So you don't need to spend a lot of money or a lot of time. And you don't have to edit a lot. Just just get the content out there, all right? Be consistent is everything. Does anybody have any more questions? We have one minute left if you have any questions. Got it? Did you guys grasp everything or was that a lot or was that a little? You can talk. <laughs> Thanks, that was Robert. perfect. Thank perfect. you. Perfect. perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. You are welcome. My pleasure. I like, I like this stuff, as you guys might be able to tell. Yeah. Yes, it was a lot. You need more coffee. You don't need coffee, man. You can have like four coffees in one can right here. Thank, thank you. Uh, I just want to personally thank you. I appreciate you taking your time and spending time with us for this one hour. We do this for everybody that's here. We do this every week and we touch on a different subject. Uh, Trevor talked to us about video. I believe next week we'll do a Q&A on social media overall. Fortunately, we were able to record this because this was by Zoom. We can't record every time because sometimes we have to stick in EXP world. Um, we did record this, so I'll get with Trevor and come up with a way where we can offer this recording to you. Maybe he'll put it on his YouTube or uh, something and you'll be able to access some of the links and some of the content that he gave. But other than that, if nobody has any questions, we can sign off. Trevor, any last thoughts? One, one thing, if you guys have questions, let's... Let's see. I'm going to just give my email is dwv at gmail.com. So you guys can hit me up directly. See, that's why I put my glass on. You, you need me if you have questions about anything. I use Epidemic Sound for music. It's like 15 bucks a month. Don't use copyrighted music. If you use copyrighted music, your, your videos are going to get flagged. Um, so it's worth spending 50. YouTube has free music. It just kind of blows. Epidemic Sound, 50 bucks a month. You got like killer stuff. And there's my email. Any other questions? Hit me up. Thanks for hanging out the whole time, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great one. Go sell some houses. Thanks so much, Trevor. Thanks, everybody. You bet. Hey. Thank you. Cynthia, let's see. Somebody asked uh, Sheila. Ask a question. How do you use the road mic with a the microphone? Okay, I'll show you right now. Uh, yeah, I have the road mic. I just I can't get it to work with the iPhone. It doesn't yeah, doesn't give me what. any volume. I'll show you what you need. Stand by one second. I'm still here. I'm getting a part. I had the same problem. Everybody that starts out with a road mic has this problem because they don't realize it. So you need two things. Number one, the I've got the iPhone 11 Pro. You would number one need the road mic because you need this connector right here and this connector. You need, you need the road mic. You need this lightning connector that comes with the phone. You can get on Amazon for like nine bucks. And you need what's called the SC4 cable. You need this thing because it's got, it's got TRRS. That's tip ring ring sleeve. It's a TRS converter, TRS to TRRS to TRS. So that you plug this into here and then the Rode mic will work. And just look up SC, it's a Rode SC4 connector. I'll give you the link right here if you want. Stand by. Yes. Yes, please give me that link. I'm dying. I got this mic and I can't use it. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was, it, dude, it, it's, we all have the same problem. You know, it was like, it took me a while to figure it out too. Like, why doesn't it work? It should work. And then the other thing, if you're using the road mic like that, you for sure want to put your phone in, uh, in airplane mode. Otherwise, it'll... well, I, I, it was clicking when I originally got it and used it on my camera, it was clicking. And then somebody said, put tinfoil around the, the, uh, 
the red part and that's what got rid of the clicking. So yeah. Yeah, just, just put it in airplane mode and you should have no clicking. Okay. Okay, and this is SC4, here it is. Uh, I last purchased this item July of 2017. <laughs> that's when <laughs> I figured it out. Okay. Thanks. Okay, and that's Sheila, are you the one talking to me? Yeah, okay, there's yeah. a link that thing. Perfect, you thank you. You're welcome. Hey, we got a couple of people. Anybody else have any questions? I'm not in a rush. I can answer questions if you guys are still, still here. Sheila Cahoon, my local realty. Yeah, if you have any, uh, if you have any referrals for Michigan, I'll take them. Michigan, awesome. Where in Michigan are you? I'm in. Well, the only state you can do this in, but I'm right here. Right there. <laughs> right there in the state. Yeah. So there. I'm in the south southeastern part of Michigan, about a, about six miles from uh, Lake St. Clair. Okay. My son was a missionary in Detroit for a while, a long time ago. That was an experience for him. He said every other house was like burned down and he was in like some of the really rough areas. Yeah. Detroit, has Detroit recovered yet? You know, downtown Detroit, Dan Gilbert uh, has taken and revitalized Detroit tremendously, like the downtown area. Unfortunately, right. the, the, the suburb parts of Detroit are still in not really good shape. So people mm -hmm. need to come in and, you know, if anybody's looking to invest, we would love uh, people to come in and just buy up, buy up uh, blocks, blocks of houses, right? And yeah. just revitalize the, the inner city. So that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what it would cost to like buy the whole inner city, get some billionaire well, there. I looked at, uh, I actually looked at the block my grandma used to live on, um, mm -hmm. just off eight mile. And uh, you know, you could probably buy the entire block for I would say less than a hundred thousand dollars. The really? entire block, the entire I wonder block. I there's opportunity there. Like if a bunch of people did that, you have investors, each investor buys a block or two. Yeah, like three and then they could potentially make a fortune. Bulldoze everything, start over, build you know, relatively low priced housing. Yeah, you should do it, Sheila. Start a campaign. You're in Michigan. I put it on you. There you go. For Thanks, Trevor. People. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. Over the questions, I'll give you another. I'll just hang out here for like sixty more seconds. Hey, Jerome, welcome back, no, dude. No, no other questions. That was awesome, and I'm pretty sure it, it would be nice to have you back in the future. So let's Certainly. talk about that. Certainly, yeah, I didn't even get to half the stuff. So uh, yeah. yeah, I get all excited I get all excited talking and you know, I just keep rolling. Yeah, that's how some of my classes end. And that's why I kind of wanted to maybe get a recording because it can be a lot and people value the information. So if we can do something with it, like Evergreen, it, it provides more value to our agents. So oh, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm trying to do. But, you know, I have to work within the limitations of you know, policy. So yeah, you're doing got, a great job. Like, yeah. Now that EXP is a huge corporation, you know, Absolutely. Uh, Cynthia has a question there. Um, she says, oh. uh, can you send me that link to Trevor, that tr uh, link that Trevor just sent you for the adapter on the mic? So, oh, yeah. I'll, yeah here it is. Uh, if you can just, um, I'll, yeah. I'll send it to her in workplace chat. Don't worry about it. Trevor, do you have uh, like um, landing pages or anything like that where we can maybe put this up and link? Uh, all this stuff. I mean, I've got links to all this stuff in every one of my videos on YouTube. So if you just okay. go to youtube.com slash YouTube, last name I can't see and type at the same time. Let me see. Slash creator. Um, all that, all links to almost everything are right there. Uh, the course EXP is the code. Just type in that code um, and to get that discount, it'll work for today. Okay. Go to let's bwb.com. That's the that's where the course is. Yeah, on the on my website, I mean on my uh on my uh YouTube channel, the links are always to the webinar. I've got a like a an hour webinar, but just to go right to the course, you need that link right there. Okay. And All right, awesome. Thank so, you so much. You're welcome, guys. Thanks, Jerome. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Check out, talk to y'all later. Absolutely. See you Bye. around. Bye-bye.